from the deputy governor resigning to the state house of assembly being blocked to party faithful clashing the ondo election is just few days away who is coming in this is plus politics i am coyote ladendi Welcome back. This is Plus Politics. The battle for the Ondo State governorship, uh, governorship seat continues and is even hotter now than the voting exercise will take place in just a few days away. And just as in previous elections, merging of political powers have taken place. In this case, 11, or it is reported that 11 of the 17 registered political parties in the state have merged and collapsed their structure to support a particular candidate. One of the remaining six candidates joins us now to discuss the issues surrounding the upcoming election. I'm referring to Prince Dakpo Adelegon, who is the governorship candidate of Africa Democratic Congress, ADC. Good evening, Prince Adelegon. Good evening, thank you for having me. And good to have you. Yes, uh, you were in the news uh, just two, three days ago, and uh, the issue was about the exclusion of your name from the debate. Can you bring us up to speed? Um, what grounds do you have with that exclusion? Because people would say that you are not the only candidate that didn't participate. Okay, well, thank you very much, Madrito. Um, we were invited to the October 4th uh, debate by the organizers, and um, that was about two weeks ago. Uh, we accepted the invitation and we're ready for it. Uh, there was a set of candidates that were hosted on the 29th, about five or four political parties, and we were expecting at least another four or five uh, will participate uh, in this October 4 uh, campaign. Uh, but lo and behold, on Friday evening, uh, my office got a letter uh, disinviting us from the same debate. And when inquiries were raised, why were we being asked uh, to step out of the campaign um, 24 hours to the campaign or so? Uh, the excuse was that logistics, challenges, and so on and so forth. Incidentally, we know the venue. We know that venue can take six, seven candidates if, 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 they, if they want to. Uh, and we investigated and described that there was a political leaning on the organizers to ensure that the Apoidea Lego does not uh, does not uh, speak uh, uh, at that debate, uh, probably for, because of the force of our programs and the way we articulate our implementation strategy for the economic transformation of those states. The bid has been we have taken that and we have accepted it. And today, uh, we also had our own debate. Uh, I was the only debater, uh, and all the questions that were asked by the people that were invited to the Sunday debate were asked and we gave our answers and that will go into the media tomorrow so that the people of Ondo State can have the benefits of our own perspectives and our plan and strategy for the economic transformation of Ondo State. Okay, let me say thank God that uh, this is another big medium for you to also mention what you have in store. But before we go into that, let's look at uh, your person. Uh, I must say that you have quite... Um, appealing uh, curriculum vitae, so to say. And uh, for those of us in the media, this name comes readily in mind. But political circle, do you think that you have what it takes to be accepted and be voted for? Well, um, two questions. One, the political class may find it difficult to accept someone like me because all of the culture that has become endemic in our politics in the country, uh, I do not practice them. Uh, I don't practice camouflage. I don't practice um, septuplage. I don't practice deceit and mis misinformation. Uh, I do not have thugs. I don't, I don't buy guns for political uh, thugs, um, and so on and so forth. And I don't do money in politics. Uh, but uh, uh, in terms of the people, the people will accept it because all of the things I've mentioned for the last 40, 50, 60 years, of, or 50, 40 years, of, let's say 30 years 
of uh, post-1999 uh, political experience has brought us nowhere. It has only regressed our society. Societies that used to have water running from taps have dried up taps. Bus shelters are on roads and streets in major capital cities without buses. Students are not able to go to school because the school fees are impossible to pay. There, there are no industries uh, where that's meant to be because they, they have no jobs, no employability, no money. So you have a situation where we're in a state of, you know, of stupor. A rich state like Kondo State um, with, with probably the richest human, natural, and geographical resources the country can boast of, cannot take the salaries of its workers. We are like a slum, a is like a village, an oil-producing state. So our people are tired, and that is why they will accept it, the mean. The technocrats in politics with capacity, with competence, and compassion, they are tired. Their backs are on the wall. They don't know what to do. And they need people of our generation with exposure, with contacts, with experience to come forward. Yeah. And that is why even if the political class are, 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 are suspicious of, of, of our intentions and, and, and how we're going to eliminate the exploitation of our people, let, our people are ready for this. Let, let's look at, um, I, I'm sure you would expect this kind of question that I'm going to ask you now. And that's the fact that uh, out there, we're trying our best as media to give limelight to other candidates. But it appears it's been narrowed down to three horse races, as uh, horse race that you might call it. Uh, how do you intend to be in the front line? Probably that's one of the reasons why your name was uh, taken away from the debate. But you don't agree anyway. So how do we no, I mean, describe you? No, sorry, my brother. Yes, just finish your question. Okay, I should rephrase it. No, finish it, finish it. Okay, so I want to know, why is your name not mentioned among the top three candidates ahead of Saturday's election? Okay, true, truth of the matter is that there are 17 political parties running for the governorship of those states. And in the eyes of the Constitution, we're all equal parties. None is bigger than the other. Some may be older, some may be richer, some may be experts and they have dexterity in the political culture of our country, uh, which is monetization of our politics, the democratization and militarization of our political system. That does not preclude younger parties with credible programs from not stepping up. And if you're looking at why I was, I was excluded from the debate, there was a debate on the 29th. There were parties that are not as consolidated on the ground like ADC that were invited to the same program. So mine was a political decision. It had nothing to do with um, MPP was there, uh, SDP was there, ADP was there. These are parties that do not even have any single elected officer. ADC can boast of elected officers in the two states. So the reality that mine was simply a reaction to the strength of our voice in the last six months, telling our people the need for change, a time for a paradigm shift, and telling our people to go and vote for their future vote for the future of their children. It is not a chieftaincy title. It's not a family title to be a governor. It's about service. The name governor itself connotes the word governance, which means delivery of promises made. You know, passion for the people. Okay. The, ex ex the, the ex ex execution of compassion as the basis of moral policy formulation and exertion. Without that, there's no governance. So okay. what we've been practicing in this country is politics. And the time will stop. Our people must be giving governance. We cannot continue to plan madness for 20 years and we don't have any time to execute it. So even if we are not the popular party, even if we are a very rich party, this election is not going to be about the party, it's going to be about the personality. Okay. And whatever happens in October, we have started, our generation must come in, a generation of knowledge and capacity and experience and exposure and contact okay. to transform the economy of our state, to bring prosperity for our people, irrespective of whose ox is there. Okay, in, I think that, that, that's, that's, that's true. Interesting. I, I was in uh, Ondo, to be precise, four years ago and eight years ago, and I covered that election as a journalist. And uh, you recall that that was where that mantra started, Fibo, Diboko Sebe. That means uh, a kind of vote buying that was prevalent at that time. It is sad that the narrative we hear this time around Talk like, I mean, people hardly talk about uh, development. People hardly talk about the issues you're mentioning. People are discussing zoning. People are discussing uh, 2023 calculation. People are discussing equivalency factor. 
uh, is, is there a different narrative that you are getting from the people apart from these issues that are out there? None. Our people are exceptionally not interested in any of those issues that are the core of the fight between the big parties. Our people are basically concerned about the absence of an economy. Because like I said, a society without an economy is a static society. They are worried by the impact of COVID-19 on livelihoods and lives. Uh, unemployment is rampant. Our youths are making their girlfriends into rituals for Yahoo Yahoo Plus money. Um, uh, men are, not, are, are employed, they're not getting paid. Students don't have access to uh, have education. Our health system is in, is in shambles. Our roads, federal and state roads are unpassable. So the reality is that the existential issues that affect lives and lives are the things that we're hearing from our people. And they're asking and praying that they will have a leadership that has the knowledge and the know-how and the compassion to dimension our opportunities. And what's our advantage? What I call the dual advantage? Geographically, we are situated as the economic hub of the country. Or, uh, for example, is a town that receives almost 10 billion hours of goods on a monthly basis. Importation, manufactured goods from Lagos to South, South, Southeast. Currently, all or gets is Panayam and Bushmi that people stop and buy and eat. Meanwhile, that we will turn to our Chicago. We want to turn it to the economic hub of the country with warehouses, logistics, and customs to ensure that those goods destined for the South, South, Southeast can spend 24 for eight hours in warehouses, bonded warehouses in, in Ore, and then wait for their customers from the South, South, and South to pick them up and vice versa. Within those 48 hours, Ondo State will derive economic benefits. Okay. There are a million passengers that passes through Ondo State three to two to three hours every month. A million passengers, 250,000 vehicles times four passengers average. They transverse all the five major cities of Ondo State from Ore to Ondo to Akure to over to Ikare, all the way to the north. And they pass through, the experiences are terrible, very bad roads, negative optics, and all the five cities have no traffic generators. Okay. So drawing some of this traffic and and, 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 let, and, let, and wealth let, into our state. Let, so our people are tired, and even okay. if the revolution does not start on Saturday, it has begun, and the change is imminent. Okay, interesting, interesting. And I'm very, very careful with your time, because I understand your moving into another meeting. So the shorter, the better, so that we can take you up on some other issues. In, another thing about Ondo State is the fact that, uh, I know Lagos is also an oil producing state with the discoveries few years ago, is the fact that Ondo seems to be, should be one of the richest states in the Southwest. Uh, are you also going to be a bit, pardon my language, distracted with this federal location, hence, not building your IGR, or what's your plan for IGR? One of the benefits of the COVID-19 is the reduction in what is going to come from the federal government to the subnationals, which are the states. Uh, that may be its advantage, but we will take it, make that advantage. And that means that going forward, any subnational or state must have at the helm of affairs economic managers. Those with the requisite experience, the contact and exposure to transform the economy of those states. God Basaki does not belong to my party, but as an e economic manager, the votes of a door election was not for PDP, was for God Basaki and his government and the economic transformation that they have started in a those state. On those state, people are yearning us for an economic manager who can be on top of our resources to dimension and put a deep sea port in Ubokoda to bring back a refinery to Olokola, uh, to bring back our Okoel LNG to transform Ore into our Chicago, to take advantage of the one million traffic every month that transverses for three hours on those days between the west and the north, and create economic traffic generators in each of those towns to bring in some of that wealth. So indeed, we are going to develop our entire, entire generation of revenue. We have a lot of strategies to globalize the economy of those states. Our diaspora revenues about three billion every year. We can attract a percentage of that money towards economic transformation of Rondo State. So our IGR and money from Abuja, if it comes, but we're not going to rely on it. We have drawn up a strategy to globalize our economy. California, by the way, in the 70s, was a state in America, was the seventh largest economy in the world. Today, it is still a state in America, is the fifth largest economy in the world. 
Our intention is to turn on those that are the richest of national wow. in Nigeria, and may God help us. I'm, I'm afraid that I just quickly has the last question, and that has to do with your uh, uh, background as the president of uh, the Nigerian British Chamber of Commerce. And people will expect that. Uh, how is FDI going to be focused on? What is your plan for tourism? Please, you have 90 seconds to do justice to these issues. Okay, tourism for us, like I said, we're going to focus on two angry foods, Itori. We're going to globalize as an international mountain climbing and skydiving center. We're already talking to Thomas Cook to help us to market that. As well. And then we'll globalize the Ondo State economy. Secondly, we want to make Ondo State International Conference center of the country by building a sunside city in Accra beside our airport, being the center of the country to ensure that we can leverage on tourism uh, to, as one of our FDI uh, 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 attractions. Overall, our Ondo State advantage um, economic policy is around the transformation and leveraging of our geography, leveraging on our natural resources and creating jobs, employability for our people. Thank you so much, uh, Prince Dakpo Adilego, who is the governorship candidate of ADC, because I think it's the party that matters. So uh, on that day, we wish you all the best. We wish you all the best. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. and to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, another candidate joins us. We'll be right back.